Okay, so welcome everybody to this event on AI in African Higher Education Impact, Challenges and Prospects, presented by Professor Mustafa Diak from the Southern University System in the USA. He is also um, a social entrepreneur. He has been involved in research in many different fields over the last several years, including interactive multimedia learning, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, and cognitive science. Um, he's very interested in issues of inclusion and designing virtual learning environments that facilitate individualized instruction, academic success, and college affordability. He also has a long and illustrious record of past and current work in relation to online learning design and open educational resources and open educational practices. If I was to go through his full bio and um, explain it all in detail, we wouldn't really have time for the presentation. And yes, I think it's very important what Irene has said in the chat about this being the first in a series of events in Emerge Africa about AI and African higher education. So without any further um, delay, I'm very happy to hand the mic over to Professor Mustafa Diak. Uh, well, thank you so much, my dear friend, uh, Tony Kerr. And Tony, I don't know how long you and I have known each other, but uh, of course, we don't want to get into that because the audience may think that we are very, very old. But I can tell that we have been in the arena of uh, online education and educational technology for a while now. We can go probably counting maybe 25 years and more. And uh, I, I really wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge really the, 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 the work that had been quite frankly done by Emerge Africa, really to be able to support our community in developing really skills, you know, to support our students. I've joined the network, I think, since the beginning and at everything that we had, any kind of event, I have been always trying from my home here in Louisiana, where I invite actually everybody, uh, to really come and, and support the initiative. So I want to really to thank uh, uh, Tony. And today we have uh, Jacob Tedderson, who's also uh, from, uh, you know, Emerge Africa, really to host this event. Now, uh, I, 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 I do think that um, the subject is quite frankly, very, very appealing because for everybody who's really involved right now in, uh, you know, educational technology, you all know that uh, we are really getting into a period of disruptive technology because that's what AI is. I'm getting really to know some folks right now come uh, 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 like uh, uh, Bill Gates, who's now comparing really, you know, this innovation, this disruption to the era of really the discovery of electricity. Some other people are just, uh, you know, mentioning the internet, you know, uh, uh, deployment as really equivalent in terms of disruption. But anyway, and, and, and in this uh, webinar, after uh, uh, I met with uh, uh, Tony Care for these last week, we've been changing, uh, exchanging a lot and discussing about the possibility of really bringing a community of AI for Africa. Because regardless of whatever the implementation of this technology is, we, we as African have to really understand that really cultural differences is something that's gonna be making really a huge difference on all this. We have collectively to start thinking about possibility of integrating this, you know, according to our own communities, according to our own needs, you know, according to our own culture. 
So it's going to be different as we move with AI and mainly when we start focusing on really pedagog pedagogy. So I do, that's why I listed really some goal of the webinar, which the first one is to explore the different approaches of uh, implementing AI in an African, African context. And for the rest really of the presentation, I've tried really to focus on, you know, uh, Africa, you know, the most that I can, and to really, you know, navigate a little bit the AI environment so that I, I can just prompt some questions really to be able to discuss what's gonna be the next step for our community. And uh, 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 really by doing this, uh, I think I was quite frankly hopeful to be able to run 31 slides, even if we cannot do this, it is going to be essential really, Tony, or uh, really Jacob, to let me know about the time because it would be great if we can at least allocate 20 minutes so that we can get our community to interact with us and to raise questions and to see how we can move from here. But, but really talking about this, I think in terms of term, I, I mean the definition of uh, artificial intelligence, I think everybody quite frankly know what the term is and all the implication. Uh, the transformation that we're seeing in terms of natural language processing, which is just a subset of AI that focus on machine, you know, uh, understanding of human language. We have a huge, really, development in terms of innovation and in terms of research in that arena. But when we come to large language models, you know, like, for instance, you know, chat GPT that can generate human-like text base on the data they have been trained on are uh, really some kind of uh, really development that's coming really uh, to us very, very fast really, and bringing some level of disruption when it comes to really tech technology integration. Now, which company are, you know, uh, pioneering these uh, uh, large language model space? I mean, everybody know about open AI, which seems to be, one of the leading company, but you have Google with, uh, you know, the, the BART model. You have Turing NLG from Microsoft. IBM has been there mainly when it comes to really creating chatbot for business with a focus on customer service, hugging face, for instance, you know, for his, which is an open, you know, source platform for natural language processing tasks. So these are just, you know, some example I had to pick and choose it. So many initiative and uh, new companies, even in Africa, really emerging in this space uh, that I think I, I, I really need to share later on, you know, on that. And, and looking at really uh, some historical, you know, uh, 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 ping pointing starting from 2011, uh, 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 with IBM Watson that win Jopardi and uh, the rise in, in interest in AI. I mean, I am sure if you get to the research literature, you can point point even to some research that was pointing to really the development right now of uh, AI. How can we get machine to be intelligent, really, quote unquote, had been there really for a while. But in terms of transformation, really, in 2018 with the trans Transformer Architectures, this was really the main foundation for current uh, LLM. And of, of course, we have in 2020, the launching of GPT-3 by, by OpenAI, which brings some advanced conversation of AI. Now, really, as I said earlier, this become really a really disruptive technology that us, you know, African, we have to start really paying attention to and, you know, being part of really the development of things. And, and I'm just putting this really to for you, us to see how uh, 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 seriously, you know, uh, 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 LLM like chat GPT compared to some other app like, you know, TikTok and Instagram, because if you look at really the, uh, uh, the path to 100 million users, it took really 
chat GPT around, that's less than two months actually, and compare with the other application that we know here uh, and the time it took really for uh, 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 the momentum to reach around 100 million. So that's really something that is very, very significant. Now, uh, if we look at, uh, I'll just to look at maybe the model layers, just talking a little bit about, oh, there's something that happened here. Um, uh, I, let me see, I think, you know, I'm going to get back to the presentation, but just talking about the model layer and looking at the different application of these technologies, really, when it comes to, for instance, text, you know, use for marketing, sales, support, general writing, note taking. There are many, many applications on that. Even in the arena of coding, you know, the code generation, documentation, and the web application builders, because it make it easier to build applications, really. Uh, in terms of really image generation, you have a lot of things going on with OpenAI, for instance, Dale E2, uh, stable diffusion right now, which is being used in the arena of the arts, uh, voice synthesis, you know, applications. You have video editing generation where you can get now to use really uh, some tools to be able to generate, for instance, YouTube channels, you know, in a way that is extremely surprising. Uh, the 3D modeling scene is just evolving, even for creating some movies. I've been working lately with some uh, 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 movie producers in Senegal, where we're developing already some kind of really, you know, uh, uh, tools or resources for education in that arena. So the applications are really quite frankly, huge at this point. Now, what is the potential of AI technology in transforming sectors in Africa? I mean, there are different sectors right now, uh, uh, really where we have, you know, many potential to aid the growth of African economies and alter the social and cultural fabric of, of, of our continent. I mean, in education, in business, you know, enhancing productivity, improving healthcare, in the arena of legal and judicial services, in the in the in the arena of transportation, and here I would even share some application right now going on, really in Africa right now, some project going on. Of course, we're going to be us focusing on education, fostering you know justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion that we call JEDI through personalized learning, you know, curriculum diversification, equal access to quality education in that arena, there's really a lot of things that's going on. And what we're hoping is that through Emerge Africa, that education component there, that's where we're thinking that we can contribute by building really community of practices, really to be able to focus in that arena. Hey, excuse me. Mustafa, apologies for interrupting. Um, yeah. Can can you reshare your screen? Oh, <coughs> the screen. Uh, I am not sharing the screen now. Not currently. Oh. Okay. Well. Sorry about that. Yeah. Let me share again. Okay. Okay. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes, if you, if you can put it on full screen mode or slide share mode. Okay, that'd be let, good. Me, let me put it back to slide, to slide show mode. Thank you, that's great. And, and I think then you, the people were, were, did not see then this slide that they missed earlier where I was talking about the potential of AI technology. This is where I were before, really. And, and mentioning that in the case of education, really, where you know, fostering justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, which is JEDI through personalized learning and curriculum diversification and providing access to education is really a field that uh, as far as we are concerned uh, with, the, with the emerged community, that is really an arena that we hope to 
build really community of practice really to see how we can contribute really in uh, you know bringing these kind of disruptive technology back home so uh and uh, if i uh if i if i go back uh and what are the key needs and priority in ai governance and application in africa i mean there's obviously issues of policy initiative for ai governance and that needs really some some strengthening. I know that globally, if I look at in the United States, in Canada, you know, uh, the European Union, right now, UNESCO also is supporting these kind of initiatives somehow. And I see that even in Africa, because I do know that in Senegal, we have a conference that we hosting on October 12 to 14, there are some other initiatives that start really this kind of discussion for AI governance and the need for en enhancing capacity for AI governance if that's really recognized. And uh, AI priority for countries in Africa, th that can vary, but offer an opportunity for cooperation. I do know that if I look at really the African framework right now, South Africa is just moving toward that. You have countries like Kenya, you know, she's doing really very interesting things and Ghana, you know, that are doing things. But here, uh, 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 for the sake of this presentation, leveraging AI for economic growth, development and digital transformation, updating education skill and training systems, and facilitating AI research and development as far as our community is concerned. Again, these are really some fields that we're going to be definitely interested in building really community. Now, ethical biases and cultural sensitivity in, uh, in AI, you have some critical area, right? You know, everybody know that these are environment where we still dealing with addressing uh, racial biases, really with uh, uh, with the LLMs uh, model, regardless of the model actually, and ethical consideration in prompt, en prompt engineering, because uh, I'm gonna touch on that really, that it is important to design prompts that are ethical and do not lead to harmful or misleading outcome the cultural sensitivity, you know, which is which is getting taken back home, that's really extremely important as well. And we need really to pay attention to that as well. Now, and and and, and looking at the private sector uh, contributing to the growth and, and diversity of uh, AI in Africa, you know, I mean, uh, you have a lot of sectors now investing in bo both financially and human resources to increase diversity, you know, strengthening AI research in Africa and developing solutions that mean Africa's challenges. I've been involved with a lot of group here, like for instance, uh, I'm sure everybody is aware, or if you are not, it is quite important really to look at the work by Google to establish uh, its first African AI research hub in, uh, in Accra, Ghana in 2019. And Google is really committed to collaborating with local universities and research centers. Talking about Tony Care as well, I was we were discussing about inviting uh, uh, one of my really very, very good fr friend, Diak, really, who's leading that Google initiative in Accra. Hopefully in our webinar series, you know, we're gonna be able to invite him really to talk to us. IBM, you know, Estadip uh, Tunisia, which is an African organization, is doing very, very well. Uh, GeoGecko in Uganda as well is really doing some kind of uh, primary work in that field. Uh, and if you look at uh, application in the private uh, 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 sector right now, I mean, you have different application, that's why in the arena of health, and these are very, very significant, you know, in terms of uh, uh, health, uh, like for instance, initiatives such as, you know, SOFIBAT, automated malaria diagnosis, number boosts and vital signs, all that in the health system uh, run in Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, and Kenya, if we if look at really in agriculture with vital sign, Arifu and farm drive, you know, so all these really are some 
uh, initiative that are really going on in Africa with fintech and transport exportation. So you don't have to note here because I'm gonna be sharing this slide so that you can really maybe uh, learn a little bit more about really the different initiative. Now, uh, 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 moving away from traditional teaching and learning practices, we have been really in the online learning arena for a long time. And it is quite frankly important for us to understand that pedagogical integration of this tool gonna be extremely important for us. And that's gonna be a different level. For instance, you know, as a senior instructional designer, I know that learning design gonna be one of the key and that's gonna be extremely transformative. As we speak right now, I'm developing with Tony Care two courses. One of them is really the use of AI for learning design, for instance. You know, we are preparing some course there that's gonna be maybe available to us. Uh, in the method of delivery, the student engagement, how are we going to be assessing learning? We got to just be ready to move away from traditional teaching and learning practices and really to get to get ready, really to engage on different way of lo lo looking at things. How can AI technology help to deliver the promises of e-learning or digital education? We have had many, many promises and we fell definitely to deliver on these you know, promises really. And like for instance, individualized learning. How can I make sure that if I have a classroom of for instance, 50 person attending to be able to really attend to every student through individualized learning and adaptive learning pathway, that student gonna just you know, uh, be successful in that class regardless of the issue of disabilities, uh, gonna be some kind of things that we're gonna be really, you know, looking at here in terms of promises. Your know, AI-based tutoring and coaching systems, how can I build some system in which I'm gonna be embedding AI-based tutoring? I have been working on some project like this as we speak right now in America, where the learning environment, we embed some AI-based tutoring that's gonna be supporting the student through the learning process. I spoke about really the assessment and the feedback uh, process that we're gonna be needing to do something at that level. But what are the key challenges and policy implication of introducing AI in education? I mean, I think I have, you know, touch already on all these items really here, but uh, mainly if I look at item number five, enhancing research on AI in education, this is definitely something that uh, we hope really to engage with our institution, really to collecting use cases because that's where we are at this, at this uh, uh, really at this point. So this is really, this is critical, but, uh, uh, the, the problem that we have, and even now, you won't believe it, even in the United States, I'm just sharing here uh, 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 really a survey that was run by Crimson's uh, 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 Harvard in 2023, and uh, looking at really the challenges for early adopters of this, uh, of this technology. If you look at this graph, pretty much 70% you know, of the faculty that was poor in this research had really some kind of negative view of integrating AI in, uh, you know, in academia, really. Uh, of course, the STEM faculty report greater optimism for AI in higher education, but that tells you really where we are. It is going to be critical for us to understand as well our community, you know, uh, Tony and Emerge Africa and myself, we're preparing for and some, some kind of survey to be able to replicate really the, the Crimson study to see really in our community, you know, what are the beliefs at this point? I'm running, as we speak, some uh, uh, study like that for historically black college and universities in the United States. Remember we have 105 uh, universities in the US and trying really to understand this. Now, uh, this is really something that I would like, if there is something that we need to retain or remember from this webinar, 
that is the important of what is called really prompt engineering and how the principle of garbage in and garbage out apply to the use of AI in education. Regardless of the LLM that you're going to be using, you know, AI system like uh, uh, chat GPT, for instance, you know, uh, are likened to really a digital pa parent. They can output what they are trained on quality of input. That's what we call the prompt. That's going to be determining really the output that you're going to be receiving on at that level. Prompt engineering for me is really the essential knowledge skills that everybody needs to take home. And as I, as I was telling about the course, we have also two courses introductory to prompt engineering that we're going to be making available through Emerge, uh, Emerge Africa and an advanced course really to help our, our practitioners to be able to query these machines so that you can get really information that you need and so that we're gonna be able really to contextualize. This is extremely important, really. When we talk about AI, just remember prompt engineering is gonna be really the key things, really. Now, uh, cultivating the skill of asking better questions for effective AI engagement, all these gonna take home also the importance of you know, prompt engineering that we that we talk, talked about or uh, also and here there is a term that is used right now in the arena of AI that is called AI hallucinations because this machine hallucinates. Hallucination means that sometimes they can just really invent fake news and fake and information, you know, depending on the kind of carry. So depending on the prompt, you know, that you're gonna be asking to this machine. So these are really critical, and in my opinion, in embedding all this, we need to pay attention also really to learning theories because the learning theories that we know in education, you know, we should carry those in the arena really of AI, really transformation. Those are really, really important. Now, I was indicating earlier the need for use case research in AI classroom and implementation. Here are some use cases, for instance, using AI as a mentor, you know, using AI as a teacher. I am working right now very close with uh, the Can Academy in the United States. They have launched really a teacher that's really exceptional in that arena. You can use AI as a coach, you know, as a teammate, you know, uh, even student uh, that really collaborate with another student in that environment using AI. It can use as a simulator, you know, and use as a tool to accomplish, for instance, different tasks. All these cases are being really applied right now in terms of research. I do know that uh, with my research at Southern University, I have already some students looking at some of this arena really at this point. Uh, why not our community with uh, 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 Emerge Africa for some of our institution to be involved with those? Uh, empowering empowering students with active learning strategies through AI, that's really critical at this point in different dimensions like uh, monitoring self-learning uh, self to foster uh, metacognitive skill you know, that teach students to think about their own thinking, which is critical for lifelong learning. Active feedback seekers, collaborative learning, for instance, to build soft skills like teamwork, critical analysis, human AI collaboration, really to instill a mindset of questioning and validating knowledge. All these are really arena of uh, use cases for research and implementation that you can find really application when it comes to really to uh, to this kind of technology. And uh, if you look at as well, you know, uh, uh, judgment skill through AI feedback, how can AI feedback serve as tool to enhance student critical thinking and judgment skill? There are really some kind of approaches that we really we need to you know pay attention to 
when we integrate really these kind of dimension really that can you know engage our student in building those kind of critical thinking skill and uh, you know using ai as support tools in their teaching and learning you know in the, in this arena those are extremely critical as well now uh, I, I was just adding here some other uh, arena here of uh, of research uh, that we deal that could deal with uh, you know uh, critical and uh, iterative learning, co-creating knowledges, you know, and reframing AI from product producer to dialogue partners. You know, it's not about just being in 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 terms of uh, gen ai models really asking question and getting results no we got to really get beyond that to be able really to create knowledge ourselves those are uh, uh, some some way of thinking as far as uh, uh, ai research is concerned and and i think i i i, I talk about this don't ban don't ban the technology you know, and uh, mindful integration in the classroom is extremely important at this point. We have to understand that. When we started, really, if you recall, and I think everybody can, you know, with the value of the internet, with the value of the mobile phone, our main preoccupation at that time was, this is gonna promote teaching in the, uh, uh, cheating in the classroom, we were banning, for instance, you know, even those kind of level of technology in the classroom. Our mindset is really something that we need really, you know, uh, make a change because this is going, is here to stay. Our student gonna be using it, you know. We better really adopt the technology at the onset and thinking about the best way to integrating it, you know. I think that's going to be really something that is really critical for us really developing cognitive skill, you know, experiment and don't ban prohibition, you know, stifle growth. More you dig, you, 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 you ask students not to use it, more they're going to be using it and they're using it already, you know. So I, I really do think that really encouraging our educators, whatever your institution it is in Africa, to experiment with AI technology to better understand the pedagogical values and limitations is really critical. That is something that we really must to do. Don't ban it, just please don't ban it. Now, uh, talking about that, I mean, we are really shifting in integrating AI. You know, you have now uh, something that is called really you know, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, versus, you know, intelligence augmentation, you know? We are really reframing the debate at this point. Instead of thinking of a technology which is gonna push to a transformation where, you know, uh, people are gonna be losing their job, their position, we wanna shift it in such a way that how can we use this really to augment what we are already doing, really? So there's a lot of things going on in terms of, uh, you know, intelligence augmentation and uh, 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 how, you know, all this can be transformative, you know, and uh, uh, AI plays technology at the core and IA plays human at the, at, at the core because having the technology of AI is one thing, but, you know, that technology is seriously has, has some limitation that human has how can we bring the human comp uh, a component to that, really? The passion, for instance, you know, the caring of a human, that a machine will never going to be able to replicate that. You know, IA is really looking at that kind of dimension, really. And, and some people are trying really to implement really this view, uh, like, for instance, we have already something, the National Institute for Adult Learning and Online Education in the United States, which is funded by, you know, the National Science Foundation, which is really looking at models where we, you know, include in that AI environment, the theory of human cognition and learning, you know, and the constraints of affordance and online learning environment. 
integrating it, you know, in the process of teaching, you know, and using in those environments, the AI powered, you know, cognitive assistant for teaching, learning and social interactions. This is really a, a research center I am now affiliated with in the United States. And they are really bringing some kind of transformative work. Uh, 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 applications, I told you already, after this meeting, you just gotta search something that is called Can Amigo. Everybody know about, you know, uh, 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 the Can Academy for the STEM education. Uh, they use really some futuristic educational assistant. I have one of my son, for instance, in Africa, that, uh, and he is really in elementary school. I have created an account really in the Can Academy for him to be able really to use the Can Academy, you know, virtual assistant. But, uh, you know, my name is El Kadir. This summer I was part of the Can Academy and learned a lot about STEM education. It was very, 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 very transformative. And he lives now in Dakar, Senegal. This is really a model just where we inputting IA, you know, to support stuff. And to close all this though, because I think uh, I want to just to leave some time. I have some uh, uh, resource here, Element AI. That's a series of free online courses about the fundamental of AI and how to build AI system. I am really advising everybody for instance, not only to gain access, but you can use already share with your educational systems, really, to get them, for instance, to understand what AI is about, you know, and AI in problem solving, real world AI. I think uh, Element AI here they did really a great job, and this is really a great resource that I wanted really to share. Uh, I, I, the MIT also has something that is called the AI Literacy Unit, you know, and um, raise uh, responsible AI for social empowerment and education, uh, craft classroom ready resources about AI for teaching. We have to understand that seriously, you know, developing an AI literacy course, we are working on that as well. That is something that's gonna be definitely needed for, you know, your educational community, you know? The student that you're gonna be engaging in your university, it is important proactively to make sure that they are AI literate, you know, where they learn, you know, the application of all this. Like I can tell you that this semester, I am uh, as part of my teaching load at Southern University, I'm teaching a doctoral course where we, it is called uh, technology in STEM education. And these are, using AI in a use case to get my student at the end of the class really to be able to publish a peer-reviewed paper to a journal, to an open journal, you know, an open journal which is already accommodating, accommodating you know, AI-supported publications, really. It's definitely amazing. The student... I, I engage them in bringing their idea, in writing, for instance, the paper and outlining it. And from there, we bring AI really as peer reviewer and as peer who's going to assist the student through all the process of writing, for instance, a research paper, you know, and helping the student really to get to the final product. Obviously, Getting the uh, AI to generate the original ideas is something that probably, as far as my integration of AI, you know, I would not do at this point, you know, and all this gonna evolve. But getting the student with, to bring their original idea and giving them really a research partner that would enable them to peer review their paper, uh, look at really the publication norm of a given journal and uh, and really finalizing with a paper. Those are something that's going to be shared, I am sure, uh, in the near future. But uh, this is, I think, all that I have. And I the takeaway here that was really focusing on understanding AI's limitation, demystifying AI, 
uh, and process of a product is quite frankly important. The learner agency, the, the skills AI can't replicate. That's why we talk about IA, you know, the human AI partnership really to, 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 to create knowledge. Uh, those are the things that I wanted really to share with you today. And uh, I really wanted really to close this to again, thank uh, personally, Tony Kerr, because Tony and I have been using, having numerous meetings and you know how Tony is aggressive when he, when he wanna get something for Emerge Africa, you know, to make at least launch this first webinar. Our idea is to have a follow-up webinars on AI, we're gonna be inviting uh, some people to come and join us in this kind of really building capacity for Emerge. I, I think I asked already about the possibility of a next step of building a community. Now, being something really at the frontier of uh, educational technology and uh, pedagogy, when you look at really the environment seriously of conferences that are taking place in Africa, definitely the conference that is really missing there, that is a conference for instance, that could focus on, you know, the pedagogy. How can we use AI in the classroom? Tony and I are really anticipating the possibility, not only building that community, but having really a conference or, or a summit that's gonna be focusing on that. So I wanted to thank everybody. I think we have around 12 minutes left and I'm just gonna hand it back to, uh, to Tony and Jacob. And thank you so much, everybody. This is really a privilege. Having an opportunity to be an African who have lived in the United States since 1990, that's gonna be now more than 33 years. And, uh, you know, being thankful to God to have given me the opportunity to always connect with my community, that means you, is something I have been extremely thankful. Thank you so much. And I am looking forward to partnership uh, with your institution. If you need me for any other capacity, I'm available. Thank you so much, Tony, for the invitation. And thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Professor Mustafa Diak, for an action-packed and rich presentation, which I think will provide us with ideas, um, networks, contacts, and a sense of opportunity, which could take us a little while to work through. There is so much there. Um, and also, just to say, um, at the end, we'll talk about the follow-up seminars happening in the next two weeks. And there are some questions and contributions and insights in the chat. We have a um, question from Olufemi Olubudon, um, who is saying, actually, I know that AI will lead to some job loss, but what is your opinion on human online instructors for university programs losing out in the context for online tutoring with AI powered tutoring. Yeah, and, and uh, we're well, losing job in the future, you know, it is a little bit, quite frankly, difficult to predict. It's possible, but you're gonna have to, some new jobs that's gonna be happening here. I, I, I was uh, uh, telling my daughter who's now working with IBM and I was really trying to get her to get a little bit involved with AI because I have new jobs around, for instance, really prompt engineering that is paying you $300,000 really a year. So we may be losing some, but we're gonna be expecting new jobs, really dealing with some other dimension of, uh, you know, this transformative and this disruptive technology. And trust me, that is going to touch everything that we know of basically, really. Now, when it comes to the instructional design and the tutoring, I think that would be probably a good idea if you had a chance. I just shared earlier the Can Academy and Can Migo. When you go in there, you understand a little bit that um, if you have, for instance, some uh, 
uh, AI environment that has been uh, training, we train with billions and billions of data points. If I just take the terms of math, you know, the teacher that have been uh, embedded into Can Amigo, I can tell you that is, I can tell you just that is really an expert for instance in the field of math in terms of knowledge. The knowledge, in my opinion, surpassed a little bit more, really, the knowledge of really a normal, basically, teacher. So uh, it's going to help, really, the student. And the dream here, seriously, uh, is having a classroom where you get to a point where you know at the end of the class, really, you're leaving some student behind giving them this environment in such a way that you're not leaving anybody behind really is really an ethical problem with Jedi that would enable you really to solve in here. There's a lot of research going on. There's a lot of research I can even share as we speak right now on development in that arena. But I think that was really an excellent question. Losing job, yes. Gaining more job, you know, new jobs, yes. Thank you for the answer. Um, and we have Eunice Ivala who has her hand up. Eunice, please take the mic and ask your question. Um, thank you, Tony, and uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, mine, is, mine are comments, and uh, one is to do with uh, the issue of uh, automation and uh, losing of jobs of uh, some of our, of our academics. I don't look at it like uh, people should lose jobs. That's where, when we come to policies in the university, for example, some universities have got uh, policies where they don't allow staff members to, to, they don't fund staff members to do parallel degrees. If you already have a master's, they don't fund you for that. And I think as a sector, we need now that needs to be revisited because with IE uh, taking over some of the jobs, people will be expected to take a master's to adapt to the changing skills needed in the academy. The other thing, uh, and uh, I think Staffer can come in, is to do with assessments and the fear that, uh, and it's not a fear, students are really using the 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 artificial intelligence uh, for assignments and uh, they are not using it well. Uh, we need to guide them. And uh, the other thing is that a lot of also researchers are using uh, 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 those tools to publish. And um, I, I, I just said, uh, I've been reading a lot on it and I saw China, which is really pioneering in the development of these LLM, LLM models that uh, they've already started reforking degrees from 20, some degrees from 2013 where uh, uh, students have uh, uh, used um, um, the, the IE extensively. And my question is, how do, uh, uh, the governments have to come up with statements and uh, on how these tools should be used because in the, in the future, we are going to see uh, uh, a scenario where degrees are being revoked because students are actually not writing the theses or are not being guided on how to use the, 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 the tools properly, but are producing exactly stuff uh, uh, based on the the models, and the same with the the especially for South Africa, we we're gonna see a scenario where uh, the DHET will fail to give subsidy to some of the 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 work uh, articles generated with the uh, IE. Uh, Eunice, and, and thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, you're actually looking a few steps down the road to a potential nightmare scenario where if we don't do learn how to use these things well and ethically, then um, we could be there could be problems at institutional and policy level. Uh, Mustafa, do you have any comment on that? Oh, I, I, I think you, 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 you nailed it already, Tony, because I think you, you answered totally to Eunice Iwala 
question, and I think I agree with the question she rose, and I think you 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 answered it correctly, exactly, seriously. You know, that's something that we need definitely. Policy is going to be seriously something that uh, at the national level, you know, we need to really to engage, you know, uh, our people to do it. But before we get to that point, really, us as educators and researcher. We need to understand better, really, all the implications, really. That's why we need more research in this arena, really. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to point out that next week on the 10th of October, we have Zohar Klef from um, Palestine, who will be um, leading a webinar about the ethical issues around AI and higher education. Um, the next week, we will have colleagues from Rhodes University, convened by um, Nicola Pallet, who will be having another event about AI and higher education, and focusing a lot on the issues around um, the kinds of fears that have been expressed about AI being used for plagiarism and cheating, etc. And should we let that stop us? from engaging boldly with new opportunities and possibilities. Um, and I would like to ask um, Jakob, if you can put the link to the evaluation survey into the chat as well, because I think now would be a good time for that. Maybe if there's one more question, anyone in the, in the room, you can please just um, raise your hand or take the mic. What's your question? or your insight at this point? Can we be silenced by such eloquence and information and rich um, insight about what's possible? There must be one more question. Mohammed, Mohammed Ahmed, please take the microphone. Yes, uh, I would like to thank Prof. Uh, Mustafa Diak for this uh, uh, amazing presentation. And thanks a lot to Jacob, Nguyen, and uh, Tony for everything for Image Africa. I have an idea, not, uh, not, not a comment, not a question. It is an idea about maybe we can start thinking about creating a council for the AI in the world to start writing the ethical point, to writing rubrics for something like this, how we can use a new tool in our life, because we have an advantage and disadvantage inside this tool. And if we didn't use it in the right way, we will find some other people using in, a, uh, an, in the other side. This is my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Thank um, you. Mustafa, tell us what you think about Mohammed's suggestion. Uh, Mustafa? Yeah. Yes. Um, do you think we do you think this is the kind of bold thinking that we need? Thinking about ethical guidelines for the world for AI. That this what? should come from Africa, right? Yeah, I, I, I really do think that, uh, quite frankly, I mean, the, those uh, ethical issues, I mean, if, if I look at it at the regional level, that's why I was talking about Canada, the United States, the European Union, you know, and if you if you search a little bit AI with, uh, with uh, the United Nations, even geared toward Africa, there are some ethical guidelines evolving, but at some point, I think it's going to be starting from country to country and then regionally start really having those kind of conversation really at this point, because there are a lot of these things now, you know, when it comes to integration in education, some research need to be done. And I am extremely important in doing some research on use cases and effectiveness, for instance, really, if I use it this way, is it effective in helping my student learn better? Am I accommodating more students? I'm getting everybody to the finish line. Those are some kind of issue, but that is true. That is true. But I think I, I can see some regional, like 
South Africa really defining some kind of boundary for use and all those things. I think that would be probably something really to expect somehow. Now, on behalf of Emerge Africa, I want to um, really thank you, Professor Mustafa Diak, for a most engaging, informing, stimulating and challenging presentation and conversation. Um, and if you can show, you can show your feelings using the reactions. There are really few people cheering. Um, and thank you for kickstarting the series and opening a whole set of possibilities for where we can go as a region and continent and as Emerge Africa in relation to AI and higher education. And um, I know this is just the start and that we're going to be part of a longer and bigger conversation, which is going to possibly open whole new phases of how we operate as a network. Thank you very much, Mustafa. Thank you.